We're just gonna start talking. No, 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 no fancy intros. We just tried, I just tried twice to do some fancy intros and uh, neither one of them sounded that great. So we're just gonna start talking about what's going on this week. How are you good? There you go, man. Good, man, good. But what I was talking about before we started recording and it prompted you to say something and then you wanted to record. So I'm gonna start all over again is the office that I'm in. Dude, I love this space, right? Like I love the background. It ended up working out so well. I don't know why I didn't do this sooner. But the one con about it is this is like a little casita next to our house that the people that originally built this house, they lived here in this like uninsulated, like little space while they were building the house. It's a pretty cool story, but it it isn't insulated, which is fine year round because I have an AC. So in the summers, it's not too bad. But in the winters, the winters in Texas are beautiful. It's 60 and sunny right now. It's the best. But the nights get pretty cold. It's like 35 degrees. So when I get into the office, first thing, dude, it's like bone chillingly cold. And I had plugged in a space heater the other day and tripped a breaker. So that's why we were on a call and literally like everything just went dark. But um, yeah, it's a cool office, but it gets cold in here, man. Do those space heaters, I, we are saying is that, so um, the two rooms in our house that get the most amount of use, like this is like by far, like not even like close, are our kitchen and our our garage by far like yeah of course you want to say oh your bedroom because you sleep there at night and you sleep eight hours okay whatever during the day by far the two most used rooms in our house are our kitchen and our garage because in our garage like for example today i trained in there um from 5 30 to 7 with my neighbor and then my neighbors uh, other neighbors came over between 8 30 and 9 30 with ashley to work out so that means already it's dude, we, we got to talk about AK Fit. Dude, AK Fit, bro. You saw the shirt. I showed you the I saw shirt. saw the right? shirt. Yeah. yeah. And so you so got to give Ashley a shout out, man. I think that's dude. the coolest thing. So, okay. While we're on the subject, uh, Ashley, so you, as you guys know, if you've been listening to this podcast for a while, you know what we're about. Like, I'm all about trying to help myself, my community, everyone around me just level up and, and just be more capable. It's really important to me. And as part of that is this Train Hard Men's Club and just like, you know, having people over to work out. And obviously we've had gyms for many, many years. And that's been something that's been really powerful in my life, but that's a more structured thing. Like people pay a fee, they, you know, and, and it's, it's very much so a business of course, but around the neighborhood is, is just a little bit different. So like, for example, Ashley, she had been going to our gym for years. And then when COVID hit, she started working out in the garage and she was really missing that community sense. And I was encouraging her to go back to the gym, but it just didn't work out for her schedule. And so all of a sudden she had one friend that would come over. And then it was like an accountability partner. Then it was two, then it was three, then it was four. And now all of a sudden they've had five women in there every single day after they drop off the kids at school, they'll go work out in the garage. And they've been doing this for a while. So Christmas comes around and the girls all contribute to buy sweaters that say AK fit on them because we were joking around the other day and I was like, Oh, we, you guys got to call your crew something. And they're like, we're going to call it AK fit, Ashley Kleepa fit. And, uh, anyway, so they got them all sweatshirts. So now they all have matching sweatshirts, but that's kind of, you know, if, if you're out there and you're kind of missing that sense of community from the gym, obviously I, we strongly encourage going to the gym, obviously, but if you can't make it to the gym, you know, talk to your neighbors. Chances are some of them want to work out too. And they're going to hold you just as accountable as you're going to hold them. This morning, for example, um, you know, Ash and I, we were out last night for the holidays and I knew that I had a training session at 530 this morning with my neighbor. And so, of course, I was going to make sure that I went to bed on time, that I got prepared, that I was in my garage ready to rock. And sure enough, 530, boom, he opens the door. So as much as he held me accountable, I also held him accountable. I think that's really important if you don't have that culture at the gym that you can go to really easily. Yeah, man, it's huge. Having someone, having a group of people. Um, cause there are days where like, it would be so easy to, I know, I know that's probably true for a lot of people that it's so easy to skip if it's not going to impact anyone else. If no one's counting on you to be there, if the coach isn't going to, you know, be like, Hey, where were you yesterday? When you go the day after, like, that's going to be the little thing that encourages you to maybe go. If you were super, super on the fence about it, it's huge, man. It's, it's big. I'm super fortunate that, you know, Hey, I, I love it, but Ariel definitely holds me accountable. Cause I know that she's expecting, and it's funny, just the other day, actually, we were looking at each other and I didn't say anything. She didn't say anything. And we started working out and it was a day when we had both had a rough night of sleep. Shay's like teething. So it's, it's been a little bit rough as of late. 
And um, afterwards, she was like, if you had said, hey, do you want to skip today? I would have been okay with it. And I was like, <laughs> I thought the same thing. Like, I knew that if you looked at me and you said, hey, do you not want to do today? I would have been like, all good. But we both just like stayed silent and did it and got through it. And afterwards, of course, this is always the case. We felt better that we did it. We were yeah. happy that we did it. Even though we didn't get the best night of sleep, it wasn't the same effort we would have if we did, but we were happy that we got it done and it's all good. But it was so funny because we were literally talking about that after. We were like, we were both like, uh, do I say it? Is she going to say it? If she does say it, like, I'm good. Like, yeah, there's yeah. no part of me that was going to be like, one of you know, wanted to work that. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't want to be that person. I got the, yeah, that's, that's awesome, dude. I, I got the space here originally back to that for a second. Because I thought the girls would want it in the garage. Because it's hella, it's it's California cold in the garage in the mornings at eight o'clock or six o'clock. California cold is different than Texas cold or probably a bunch of other places to listen to this podcast. <laughs> like, bro, you guys are so weak. Like, if I go into the garage, I can see my breath. It's a really cold day, and um, I'm sure there's places out there like, bro, I don't see my. I mean, I see my breath every day for weeks on end. Anyway, so I got the space here for the garage, but it turned out the girls didn't want it, so um, Ava stole it and she uses it after she gets out of the cold plunge, but. I, um, Ooh, that's gotta feel so good, dude. So good. Uh, but this morning we did one of our force workouts, uh, 15 minute EMOM into a 15 minute EMOM. So it's 15 minutes of some strict pull-ups, some strict presses. And we actually added in the reverse hyper instead of plank hold, just cause I have one. I think it's a great tool. And then we did a 15 minute EMOM of, um, cow bike, uh, pushups on dumbbells, which got really hard actually. And then sit-ups. So that was the 15 minute EMOM today that we did earlier this morning from our force program on the train hard app. Which is now when this comes out has been live all this week. So we're recording this a week before, but yeah, man, if you haven't downloaded the train hard app, if you haven't checked it out, you have to, you have to on one thing that I wanted to, one thread that I wanted to pull up from what you just said that I think is super important to how we're programming in the app, but also like how me and I know you approach fitness now. And I, I think that a lot of people get tripped up by this. It's this idea of like not overcomplicating things. Like is the reverse hyper like a perfect one-to-one -one sub for a plank hold. No, right? Like no. it's not, but like, but the fact that you are so open to like, Hey, I have this tool. I really like it. It's super powerful. Like I'm just going to swap it for this imam and having the wherewithal to know that like that didn't diminish your workout at all. Cause it was written one way and you're doing it another, if anything, it like made it better because you have this piece of equipment that if not, it's not going to be used. It's going to work other, you know, body parts. And I think a lot of people, I, I was this person for a long time, man. Like if I couldn't do a workout literally as it was written, it was kind of like, what's the point? And I think that like you miss the forest for the trees when you do that, like a hundred percent, like fitness is just meant to like get you to work out. And yes, like if you're following a program, whether it's on our app or somewhere else, there's some structure there and there's some building and there's a method to the madness. But if you have to swap a movement for the other, whether it's because of equipment, injury, or just because you want to do this instead of that, it's all good. Like people get so caught up in the details. And I think that it, it detracts from the benefits that they can get by just making the swap whenever they have to. Yeah. Like I'll, I'll probably start adding in a little bit more sandbag stuff. Cause I, I officially, uh, I don't know if any, if people listening saw on Instagram, I officially committed to February 24th, 25th, uh, tactical games in Arizona. Hell yeah. And I will also be at shot show for like a day. Um, I'll, I'll start letting people know where I'm going to be at if they want, if they're anywhere, but yeah, tactical games, 24th, 25th. So I need to start making sure I get some training in. It, it has been definitely, um, an experience already so far. And I'm excited to talk about what that what that actual tactical games experience is going to be like. But there's a big barrier to entry, dude. Like there's a big barrier in tactical games, just like there is in jujitsu or anything else. It's just there's a lot of gear that's required. And so it's, you know, it's a commitment. That's for sure. Dude, I'm excited for you. I'm excited to follow the journey and obviously see you hit the competition floor. It's always fun to watch you compete, man, because you're you're like a natural athlete you put the work in um i know you put the work in and i think it's cool because it's such a like live demonstration of what you can get out of the effort you put in like it's effort goes in this side of the machine and like the results always come out on the other side if you're consistent enough For um sure. it was funny because we, we were both going to do tactical games and you just mentioned the barrier of entry and i don't think it's in the cards for me this year, do I eventually want to do it? Do it a hundred percent. Yeah, the but, good um, thing is you have all my gear. So, like, the nice thing is that if you really want to do it, I could just give you all the gear. Oh, I'm sure. Well, I appreciate that. 
But um, yeah, I mean, it's just one of those things where you kind of have to pick your battles right now. This, you know, getting this pilot's license, a big thing for me. And uh, I don't know if you remember, do you remember that old Kevin Hart bit? It's so funny where he just like the whole special, he's always like, well, the way my bank account is set up. Um, and it's just a joke about like, you know, not, you know, wanting to spend too much, but yeah, you got to pick your battles with these things. So I think tactical games definitely in the future, but, um, I'm going to watch you do it first and then I'll, I'll, I'll figure something out. Yeah. I mean, it was, I mean, dude, it was 375 to sign up for the registration. Um, obviously just the gear alone, you need a pistol, you need a rifle, you need a vest, you need, you know, um, a holster, you need a slew of other things. And I'm going to be able to, I'm sure I could borrow like certain stuff from other people, but it's, it's a commitment. And I think after my first one, then I'll be able to commit more. And I'm very fortunate that I've been able to work with some partners and stuff, which we could talk about more on this podcast. That's I'm start getting more into tactical games. But anyways, I, I think it's a cool way to test myself. Um, but yes, I've officially committed February 24th, 5th, 25th. I'll be exclusively training our force program to get prepared for it. And then um, I'll still be rolling jujitsu to get ready for it. So Heck I'm yeah, not jujitsu out of it. I am. Um, so, dude, I got a story for you, unless you want to hit something before we move on. Well, I guess just really quick, another thing on that note of not getting caught in the weeds and, and you know, not overcomplicating fitness. Today, I was testing the workout for flex that's going to show up. I forget if it's the 20th or, but essentially like one of the last weeks of January, because I'm literally, I, so I test every workout that is put out in flex on the train hard app. And I'm probably like three weeks ahead following exactly what's going to show up on the app. Obviously I make some adjustments after I test it. Usually I have to like knock down a set or two because I bite up more than I can chew. But um, today we went in and it was like kind of a conditioning day. It was supposed to be an EMOM, 20 minute EMOM. It was going to be assault bike, um, knees to elbow, five power cleans. So those are like the first three minutes and then a rest minute. And I just went in and I like, I, I really wanted to do shuttle runs because we went to the gym. We didn't go to our gym here, but we went to the gym where we coach at Aftermath Strength. And, you know, we're there between classes, like there's plenty of room. And I was like, you know, I think shuttle runs will be like fun to do. So we did that instead of the bike. And I literally programmed it in as shuttle runs. And I think for a long time, like even I would have wanted to program something where it's like, you know, like 10 laps of 20 yard shuttle runs. But literally I put in the notes, yeah. I was like, find something that's like 10 to 20 meters and like for a minute run back and forth at right. like 90%. Like and you'll it's be not okay. a big deal. Yeah. Right. Like I don't care if you track how many you do. I don't care if you measure out the distance. Like you remember back in the CrossFit days where you were going to do something measured like handstand walking or whatever. You're like using the rolling tape measure to make yeah. sure it's like 25 feet and like setting up cones. Me and Ariel literally got after it's like, all right, we're going to go rig to rig for a minute and go hard. And it was perfect. It was great. And again, it's just don't overcomplicate it. Like just find something that seems like an adequate distance, run back and forth, period. That's it, bro. That's it. I, uh, so speaking of don't overcomplicate it. So, you know, Caden, um, my son's nine years old and I pride myself in trying to expose him to as many things as possible. I, I, I take a lot of, I take that seriously. And there's a lot of areas that I need to improve on and I'm, I'm working on it with slew of items, right? Like, um, Ashley's actually gotten really interested in golf. And so now she's gotten Caden to golf, which I think is cool. So the other day, a buddy of mine is like, hey, let's get the boys together. I'm like, all right. So he has an 11-year-old son. And I'm like, hey, let's go play football. Let's go play baseball. He's like, hey, how about we go mountain biking? And I'm like, all right. That sounds cool. Like, we haven't done that in a long time. So we we commit to it. And so I go out. I grab Caden's bike, grab my bike. And, you know, I'm pretty comfortable on a bike because I used to race BMX bikes. And so we get out to this, to this trail. And we realize very quickly that Caden's bike is, like, way too small for him. So it's been outdated because – we just haven't been paying attention to it. Like it's been fine. Like we took it camping and stuff and like, it's cool to cruise around, but like to actually climb mountains and stuff and single track, which is what we were on. It was just way too small for him. So we're out there and it's me, my buddy, who's like a, you know, an adult. Um, and the two boys, Caden's nine. And this other gentleman is his son's name is Jax. He's 11. So we get out there. Jax has a great bike. Uh, my buddy, Joe has a great bike. I have a great bike and Caden's like stuck. And so we're on this single track and it's like a legit trail, dude. Like, I mean, you're on the side of a mountain. Like it was, it was legit. It wasn't like a, some foo-foo, whatever. It was like a real trail. And I'm like, shit, like we get like, you know, we get into the trail and I'm like, damn it. Like, what are we going to do? And so I asked Caden if he could swap with me on my bike 
but I'm having clip pedals and he's regular. So I'm trying to ride his bike, right? Super small, but I was making do because the seat was too low for him. It was just a mess. He couldn't ride my bike. So all of a sudden, Jax, who has a bike that's perfect for Caden, like offers it up. And, or somehow it came to the point where Jax rode Caden's bike and Caden rode his bike. Because he was pretty skilled, he was definitely more skilled than Caden in this particular sense. He was bigger, stronger. He was able to stand up instead of sit down on the seat. He was able to ride this bike. Was it ideal? Absolutely not. Was his bike way better? Absolutely. But what I thought was super interesting, and I just really had to share this, is like, we're on this trail. We're going for like an hour. It turns super dark. Like, it was just like a, it was like an aggressive ride. Like, it was, it was gnarly, dude. Single track, you know, hillside, dark outside. It was just, um, it was magical. It was, it was great. But we get back and dude, I just look at Jax. I'm like, bro, you didn't say one single word. Not one time did he complain about riding Caden's bike. Not once, never once. Like I was so impressed by this young man that he would give up his bike because he recognized it was for the good of the overall group because we were all able to move forward together. And never once did he say, oh, I want my bike back or complain. I ended up um, acknowledging it and getting him a gift card because I was so like, I was so inspired by his action. I just thought I'd bring that up here because it's twofold. One is I want to raise young men to be able to do that. That's important. But two is that I think it was important that uh, someone other than his dad recognized that was like a good thing. And I tried to like foster that by acknowledging it. So I want to bring that up on the podcast just in case anybody's ever in a similar situation to make sure we're acknowledging those things in young men and women. Because I think they're important skill sets we could have for the rest of our life. Man, what I love about that story is like, I, I love hearing things like that where I'm like, dude, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to raise a kid that would do that. You exactly. Know? Like, that's exactly, that's exactly what we like talk about here. That's like, dude, that's my goal. My goal is to fucking have Shay be that guy. Like, I, know, I want him to go out and you have be another dad or yeah, a hundred percent be like, I want someone to be blown away and be like that young man, like surprised me. And dude. for me to be like, fuck you. And going back to like what we talked to like Marcus Philly, like that to me would mean so much more than him being like an awesome athlete, than him like winning all the MVPs and all that stuff. Like that stuff's cool. And I definitely want that for him if he's into sports. But like what you just said, like that kind of stuff, man, that's the good goal. dude. That's and it. I, told that's Kaden, I was like, I was like, Caden, you do know that like you had to give up your bike. <laughs> like, I think you would have complained a little bit. And he's like, and he knew he would have too. So it was a good <laughs> for all of us. Like, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, he was selfless, bro. He was just, he just recognized the need, gave it up. And like, yeah, I just, I, I don't know. It was, it was a very, very cool learning experience for me. It also opened my eyes, obviously, that we didn't have the appropriate tools for, for what we needed to do there. Like I forgot to bring tools to adjust the seat. The bike was way too small, but that was all kind of part of the process, man. Like someone asked me like, Hey, how was the ride? I was like, dude, it turned pitch black. Like with 30 minutes left of riding, it was a little bit sketch, but it was perfect because that, that, that's what made the journey so great. What makes the stories, man, like, um, you know, that we, we, we talked about you camping, um, a couple podcasts ago and yeah. how like, you know, it did not go according to plan. And I was funny cause I was telling Ariel the story after we recorded the podcast, cause we've had some camping trips that have been, you know, less than ideal, but we still talk about them now in a way where like it was an awesome story and we get so much pleasure out of knowing that we did that now, even though in the moment we were like, shit, we got lost and a three mile hike ended up being a 12 mile hike and we didn't have enough water and Mila got, you know, all messed up. Like it was not ideal in the moment, but just like, you remember we did that? Like we fucking did that. And it was, it's, it's just a, a cool adventure. And I'm sure that, cause you mentioned that Caden was, you know, telling his friends, afterwards he was like yeah like we didn't even have utensils and we were eating with our hands like it's a cool story for him even though it was probably far from ideal yeah dude that's that's exactly what happened the other day so i i just shout out to those guys i thought that was really powerful <clears throat> um something else we did last week um just bring it up on this podcast is um rucking you know so these these men's club meetups we normally do like really hard stuff um but we went rucking i learned a valuable lesson there and i thought this would be helpful for anybody who wants to host a ruck so we're fortunately friends with the guys over at GoRuck. They've definitely outfitted um, our entire crew with with loaded um, backpacks per se. And so I bring a bunch of them in my truck and I think I have like 25 of them. And so we had 30 guys show up the other day and everybody had a ruck and they were able to go do this hike. But the two lessons I learned, well, the first one is, is that for every like 
10 hard training sessions we do, we need to do at least one ruck so that the people that connect with each other at these hard events and get to see each other can actually get to know each other on a more real level because they walk with each other for 90 minutes or two hours. The connection is 10 times deeper when you're rucking with people than when you're training super hard and you can't breathe, but then you get a connection. So I think we have to do a little bit of both where we make sure we get in that hard training together. We also make sure we're doing stuff where people can actually engage with each other, which is why I like the go ruck model I think works. So a blend of both I think is important. The second thing I learned though, is that we had a group come out and there was a, a, a contingent of like, let's just say four guys that came out from social media. So I didn't have their information. I didn't have their, I didn't have any information on them. And when I started off the talk, I'm like, Hey guys, we're gonna go ahead and ruck, take your time, use a ruck, don't use a ruck, blah, blah. And at the, at the time it was pitch black when we started. And so this is another learning lesson that we should have all worn, um, headlamps. Cause I had one, but not everybody else had one. So I should have prefaced the group. And I should have also prefaced the group on exactly where we were going. I said, we're going to the top, but I didn't specify exactly where. So as we're going, it's pitch black. The group starts to go off and I recognize that they're going uh, the wrong way. So I run up and I tell the group that they need to go to the left. While I'm doing that, the group behind me way in the back, they get separated and I don't realize it. So a group of four guys got left and they ended up not being able to find us. And they, I ended up getting an email from them later that, you know, they had turned around because just one of the person in their group just couldn't do the the climb. It was a little bit harder than they wanted. And they, they felt like it was amazing. It was a great experience. But for me, I felt really bad because what we should have done in the future is have one guy in the front, one guy in the back and make sure we start as a group and finish as a group. And I, I, I feel like I let them down. So my learning lesson is make sure that you have someone in the back, someone in the front, and then maybe even walkie talkies or something like that to make sure that everybody does it as a crew. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's definitely going to be some learning lessons as these events get bigger. Um, but I think that's going back to what we were just talking about. I think that's what makes them cool and organic and, you know, for anyone, including the people that got left behind, like it was an experience, you know, and, and yeah. probably learned some lessons from that themselves, you know? Yeah. It, no. And they weren't mad about it or anything. It's just, it's just something I wanted to share with the group here on this podcast that if you do it in a group, make sure you have someone in the front and the back, make sure you know where you're going. And, uh, if you're doing it in, in the, in the dark, make sure you have headlamps. We, um, I remember, and I get like these Facebook memory things now, I forget when must've been a few years ago. Cause we were still in the Bay area, but we did, I forget the name of the hike, but there's a hike on the East Bay. That's really, really cool. Goes up really high. And we did it started in the dark. It was me Ariel, and me at the time. I think so. If you said the name, I would recognize it, but we had to, you had to start. The whole thing was you had to start super early in the morning. Cause the point was to get up and catch the first sunrise of 2024 or whatever year it was, but the first uh, sunrise mission, of the new year. mission, mission peak. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That was fun, man. And you have to start early enough where you're doing like the whole, and it's like, it's 2000 feet of climbing. Cause I remember that all in the beginning in the dark. So dude, super not fun, very unique way to, you know, celebrate the new year. Obviously that means you're not really doing anything crazy the night before, but you know, it just goes back to everything we're talking about. Like we'll get those pictures now. Cause it's, you know, on the new year, like I'm sure it's going to pop up on like, you know, three, four years ago, Facebook throws yeah. you those pictures. And it was just it's such a cool experience, man. It was so much fun. It, it had to have been 2019 going into 2020, if I had to guess. Yeah, dude, Mission Peak, if you're in the Bay Area, is awesome. I remember Ash and I, um, this is like shortly after Ava was diagnosed, maybe like a couple weeks, maybe not shortly, but like a couple months. I think it was the first time that we kind of broke away. We we're like, hey, we got to go do something for us. And so we went and, I th if I'm not mistaken, I think we went and climbed that. I have a picture from an off to go back and look because we just wanted to get outside, go do something. We went and climbed that. So dude, yeah, the Mission from the Peak, top yeah. is, dude, it's badass. It's badass. Yeah. Yeah. So, but there, those type of dude, people listening have those kind of things all over the place nearby them. They just need to go ahead and look it up. I mean, there's all kinds of great spots everywhere, everywhere in the country, dude. Yeah, you just have to look. Um, first podcast of 2024, Jay. What what's happening for Jason Kalipa in 2024? Yeah, I'm just aside looking. from the tactical games. Um, what's on the docket? What are the goals, man? Athletic wise, or just in general? In general, yeah. Um. I, I think I'm ta I'm tabling for now competing in a jiu-jitsu tournament for now. Um, just because I have other things that I really want to focus on. So I think tactical games, I think does that mean does that mean all this year or no? I think I don't know. I I 
I think for me, where I'm at is like, I want to, I want to express, I want to see how I can express my fitness. I want to continue to build train hard. And I want to make sure that I keep my body like healthy and safe. So rolling jujitsu two, three days a week, I think is brilliant. It's perfect. But when I compete, I, I'm openly putting myself in a position where like, you know, people are going to want to try and rip my arm off. So I just don't know if I'm ready for that today, maybe a year from now. Plus, I want to continue to develop my skills at Brown Belt before I go back and compete there. I think that's just a smart thing to do. So physically, I'm trying to compete at the Tactical Games. I'm doing the Rogue Invitational. And my goal is, you know, going through the deaf reset, obviously. And then I, I, I don't know, I might, I might come up with some like specific training goals. Like how many days in a row can I follow like force, then flex, then maybe EMOM. I might come up with something where like, I want to every day do the workout of the day with no exceptions, plus add in jujitsu. Because I mean, I generally do that anyways, but it'd be cool to see like how many days of every single workout because it's five days on that we we program. So right, you have right. two other days to do something else. And you can track it on the app. And you can track it on the app. So I think something like that could be fun from a training perspective. I think from a family perspective is making uh, sure- How old are you? How old are you turning this year? Uh, well, I'm, I'm 30. Why did, why did that take so much yeah. thought? No, no, no. Well, <laughs> you say this year, I mean, bro, it's just, dude, I just turned 38. So I'm- Right. Off. So I mean, like, tw we're talking yeah. about 2024. Hey, don't, don't, so. <laughs> don't age me, dude. I'm going to be 39 in October. Okay. That's, that's I a remember long time from now. Right. But I remember, I just, the reason I brought it up is I remember a while back we were talking about my friend, Jeff, who listens to the podcast, shout out Jeff, who is trying to do like something specific for his phone. Oh, that's right. right. Remember? Yeah. So he was trying to like, you know, whether it was going to be like run a four-ish minute mile, I think he was playing with. He's a runner though. So background in running or like, you know, train really hard for the open and masters, or he was kind of like brainstorming some things because 40 is a big year. So I remember you were saying you were thinking about some things, but I guess we're still a year removed. Yeah. So when, when I, the 40, I'm going to come up with something. I'm thinking like, it's got to be something big, man. man. Maybe, big. Man. maybe, maybe an Ironman, but by then who knows? Like, I also think from a fitness perspective, using our network, I think we're going to go out on a first hunt. I think I'm going to continue to pursue scuba diving. I think I'm going to get into bow hunting more. I think that I'm going to be doing a lot of new skills and new things that I haven't done before. And I'm excited about that. I think that that's a way that we can continue to connect. I'm, what I'm looking for personally is, you know, I have so many things I do with Caden. I mean, it's, it's endless, but I need to, I need to spend more time and attention, making sure that I'm continuing to do more things with Ava outside of just working out together that connect. I, I, I got to think about what exactly those are, you know, right now it's like shopping, eating, working out. Like what else can I add to that plate? Right. Mm -hmm. What, what more things can I do to create this opportunity? I was talking to a buddy of mine today. And he was saying that golf was important for him and his dad, because no matter what was going on in their life, like, let's just say they were having a, a riff together. They always knew that they both liked to do that thing. So maybe they'd be silent in the car on the way there, maybe even be silent on the first five holes, but eventually conversation would happen and their relationship would continue to get back to normal. And I think that, you know, for me, I'm just thinking about what type of things do I have with the kids? Whereas I get older, it could be our thing. You know, I see it with my son and my brother-in-law and my sister-in-law. They have Disneyland with their mom and uh, with their mom. And it's like their thing. And they do it all the time. What's going to be our thing. And I'm starting to think about that more now this year in particular. And then obviously with the business, dude, I just want to see train hard reach its potential. I think that we're barely scratching the surface. I think the gyms are going really well. I think the collective service is crushing it. We're really making an impact on gym owners, but I think that the train hard app and the brand and what we're trying to build, I think is barely scratching the surface. And I want to see its potential like success for me with train hard would be like at the end of the year to do an in-person event and have, you know, two to 500 guys show up, girls, guys, whoever, who just like want to connect and do something hard together. That'd be awesome. I love that. I, I, I love the Ava thing, man. And I, I, as much as, you know, I'm so far removed from having like a older boy and a girl, I, that resonates with me so much because it's, it's so black and white what you're going to be able to bond with your son with, right? Like it's, it's so it, it's simple. Like we're super simple. I, I can see it already. Like kid, like loves balls, like loves moving around, loves going outside. The other day, literally we just went outside and I sat him down on a blanket and I was shooting this little BB gun that we have at these cans that I put out. And he was just like with me, we were just hanging out and, and you can tell, and maybe like it's too young and I'm just like telling myself this, but you can tell that he just like enjoys all of those things. But it's not as black and white if you have a daughter, right? Like it's it's if those interests aren't super aligned, like 
but I, I appreciate you thinking about it and making the effort. And I can't wait to hear how that goes. Cause you know, probably be in a similar situation. Yeah. And I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be boy, girl, this, that it's just like, what no, 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 yeah, but yeah. different interests, like, right? Yeah. Like, like with Katie, sure. he has For the sure. same interest as me. So it's really easy. Like we're both going to look forward to going scuba diving. We both want to go bow hunting. We both like, it's just, it's just so easy. Um, I can't think of anything that he enjoys doing that I don't enjoy doing actually. Um, but with Ava, it's like, you know, I, I, I'm not gonna be doing like makeup. I can't do my hair. I, I, there's certain things that she's just very interested in and like yeah, yeah. clothes and going shopping. Like I, I just, I don't know. Like, so I gotta, I have to take the, I, it's, it's, it's up to me taking ownership to say, Hey, like, that's not her responsibility to, to find things to do with me. Like I need to make sure that I'm making the effort to go find things to do with her. We, we, and like the other day we went to a, a library okay if that's gonna be our thing we're gonna go to a library together i actually like going to bookstores and libraries like it, it's it's interesting to me maybe that's what it is yeah no i love that man i can't wait to hear those updates but um i, I got a new book let me show you this hang on, hang on two seconds let's do it so i just ran over for those of you who are listening to this have you heard of this boys, boys in the boats, the boys? Oh, in the dude, no, but I saw the trailer to the movie and we're literally, I'm, I'm going to go watch it with Ariel probably this weekend. Um, we're going to get out for a date night and I really want to watch the movie, but no, I haven't oh. read the book. Hey, you know what? So I got, I picked this up from a, uh, from a bookstore and I'll let you, you know, know that, you, you know that the movie is like coming out. Is that the reason you picked it up? No, well, I knew I, I'd seen something about it, but the reason why, oh, so yeah, it says now a major motion picture. I just picked it up because, um, yes, I'd seen something about it, but it just, I don't know, it just seemed intriguing to me. It says nine Americans and their epic quest for gold at the 1936 Berlin Olympics. You know, part of the deaf reset is going to be reading. And um, mm -hmm. I just think that it's something like, you know, I got a flight coming up. I'll have a few flights coming up and I want to make sure that I'm I'm reading. But uh, you brought up um, movies. So the other day it was early in the morning and I get up and uh, I happen to be, which I don't watch too, too much TV, but in this particular case, I got caught. Um, somehow I saw an ad for that movie with the boat that just keeps going towards the sand. Have you seen this with Julia Roberts? Oh, Bro. I started watching the movie and I like, I, I, I can't now sacrifice like two hours of my life on something that is going as slow as that movie was starting. So I turned it off. Dude, I, I watched like the first, did you watch it? Yeah. So what happened is I got caught like watching like the trailer, right? And okay. I'm like, I'm like yeah, yeah. I was like, fuck. I was like, dude, that's pretty interesting. Like, the trailer gets you, man. The trailer, the trailer gets you. Really it's the reason good. I put it on. It was probably one of the best trailers I've ever seen, right? Like just not, not because it was like super like, you know, whatever, like, you know, the trailers are normally like action films, all crazy. No, it's so intriguing. You need to know what's going on. Yeah, why is that boat going towards the land and not stopping? Like what is going on? So sure enough, I turned on. I'm like, dude, this is super slow. I was like, I do not want to spend my time doing this. And everybody else is asleep. So I'm like, all right. So I fast forwarded through it. Like <laughs> I fast forwarded into like parts that looked interesting. And I got the general gist of it. And, uh, you know, I got to the part where like the Teslas are all crashing into each other. And there's like a few parts. But dude, the ending of that movie. did You, you didn't watch the ending. I didn't watch it. I heard that the ending was like super disappointed. That's the other right. thing that I was like, okay, good. I didn't watch it. Cause I saw like a bunch of like memes and stuff about like, people were like just annoyed. At I don't even know what the, I don't even know what the movie's called, but it's with Julia Roberts and a few other famous people. And all I know is that it never ended. It never ended. That's all. That's all I have to say. The movie never <laughs> ended. It just got to the end and you were expecting some like, you know, whatever. But if you're one of those people who kind of gets paranoid over like, you know, world ending events you probably shouldn't watch that movie yeah i couldn't do it it was too slow i turned it off um anyway i was expecting you to ask me about my 2024 goals but since you didn't i'll ask myself uh, oh, yeah. and i'll share well, well sorry <laughs> i got wrapped up on julia roberts and uh and boys in the boats so okay this is what we were talking about last pocket that's right right before we were about to end you were going to say something like that okay if you have good 2024 goals i will um I will send you a something from Rogue Fitness and uh it may already be on its way, but give me good, <laughs> give me good 2024 gold. No, I like that you shared yours and I like how you shared yours about like, you know, like physical training goals, you know, family and then and then business. Cause I I think about stuff like that a lot. First 
before I share kind of what I've been thinking about, I bought this thing and it is awesome. It is. Can you um, talk about the dots on the wall one more no, time? No, 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 no. I won't talk about that. But it is another calendar. Um, it's Jesse Eitzler. Is that his name? Jesse Eitzler. Yeah. His um his big ass calendar. Here, let me see if I can turn my Bro. Let me know. Do you see it? Uh, yeah. It's literally called Big Ass Calendar 2024. Yeah. And so it's cool. The, the whole is that you have your whole year. So it's the, um, your audio got off. Can you hear him? Yeah. Keep talking. Um, yeah. Oh, got, all, got all funky, bro. Put your, put your cord back in that computer. As soon as Gabe turns the computer around. Oh, there you go. I think you're good. Good. Yeah. I knew that was, I knew that was a risky move, but, um, it's just, it's a big calendar, but it has the entire year on like one sheet. Yeah. And every row is a month. And like the little blue things are weekends and it comes with a video on how to use it. And I, I, what I really like is you're not supposed to put on like your zoom calls or like, you know, like little things on there. The whole goal of this is like the really big things that like excite you about the year. So right now there's one thing on it and it's the due date for our second kid. And I think the, you're whole say the, I, the train hard uh, app launch, but that was last year. That was, that was, so yeah, that was last year. Otherwise yeah. it would be on there. It would definitely yeah. be on there. Um, but the cool thing is that like with most calendars, even if it's on your computer, you usually have to flip through months, right? Yeah. You, you see one month at a time is usually what you see. And this is just supposed to give you like a really good rendition of like, do you have enough things throughout the year that like you're truly like aiming for or truly excite you? Cause you can see it visually, right? Like, is my year super front loaded? Is it super back loaded? Cause he also talks about this idea that you should have these things planned out in advance of like, Hey, I want to take a big trip at some point. And when is that going to happen? Even if it's not exact. And I have it literally right in front of me. That's why I turn my computer around. Cause it's a nice reminder of like the big events that I have during the year. Um, so anyway, one of the things is I am trying to be better about just planning ahead. And I'm, I'm a pretty big planner as is, I think on more of like a micro level, but I think from like a big picture, like I do really want to approach this year, especially now that we're like, you know, have a bigger family and stuff of not getting caught up, you know, with all the like, you know, work and like getting everything done and checking off all the boxes, but really having some things that excite me during the year that I'm like really, really looking forward to, whether it is signing up for, you know, an event or potentially a race or like a trip coming up or due date for a second kid. That's so a pretty, that's a pretty big deal. So that's one thing that, um, I'm excited for. I think that, you know, this past year, I, I got a lot more patient and, you know, flight lessons and stuff, I think really helped with that. That was one thing that's just been really testing my patience. Um, so I think building on that for next year on like a personal level, is a big thing. Physical goals, trying to fucking get jacked still. Um, you know, I, I took a DEXA scan Yeah. when I was at my like leanest last time I did like a big gain phase and a cut. So I'm probably going to do that two more times this year. And the goal is to just keep adding lean body mass and, um, you know, show that if you actually take the time to just train and be methodical about this stuff. Like you can change your body a hundred percent without needing any, you know, extracurricular. So that's on the physical side, kind of what I'm super excited for. Dude, on the business side, man, I've never been so excited for something that I'm, I'm doing for work ever in my career, like ever, dude, yeah. what we have going on with train hard is so freaking exciting. And I'm so fortunate that like every day when we were going to record a podcast or a newsletter that we built hits my inbox. Like I'm genuinely fucking fired up. Yeah. And so I'm super lucky, man, because I, I, I don't fear, I don't think I've ever started a year as excited as I am now for like what I do for work, which damn, you know, cause usually like work is like the thing that you're like, ah, you know, I got work. And then you have all the fun things when work is a fun thing, dude, it's going to be a good, then, then you're just stacking. Yeah. You're just, you're just winning. And I think that, you know, if you're listening to this, I mean, obviously you know, it, it, it's not always rainbows and unicorns, but I think if you find something you deeply care about and if you find the right people to work, surround yourself with, you can find good fulfillment out of work. Like this whole idea of like work-life balance, I think there's 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 value to it, but I think it might need to be rephrased if you actually find like, if you actually find pleasure and enjoyment out of the work you're doing, it doesn't necessarily feel that same way. And like, I know there's all those like, corny lines like working you know you'll never work a day in your life if you love what you're doing whatever it is 
But think about like Gabe, for example, he has his giant calendar. Obviously, the number one thing is the birth of your second child. That's like very hard to beat. It's, it's We're not going to beat it. Like nothing the company will do is going to beat that, nor should it. But, you know, if you if if you are excited enough about the things we're doing at the organization through Train Hard, that that I would actually make your calendar. Like, that's awesome, dude, because now you're fired up for it. And that just makes your work that much easier to do. And so if you're out there and you have a job and you're not as inspired by maybe the work you're doing, you know, maybe reframe in your mind that, hey, the work is just a way for you to be able to do other things you want to do. Or maybe there's an opportunity for you to pivot what you're doing for work so you can align things you really deeply care about with actually what makes you money. But don't rush into that because sometimes the grass seems greener and it might not always be. Having the freedom if your job is like consistent to allow you to go do other things might make it more worth than if you give up on that job and go pursue something else. You just don't want to build resentment for something you have passion for. For sure, man. I think that's huge, right? Like getting to the point where you feel stuck could be one of the worst things that you can do. And, um, you know, it's always easier to make shifts if you're going to make them sooner rather than later, as long as you're obviously methodical about it and it makes sense and so on and so forth. Yeah, dude. I love that idea of your calendar. I think it's great that you feel so inspired by what we're doing with Train Hard. I mean, obviously I do as well. I think that's that makes makes me really happy. And I think that the calendar idea is actually really brilliant because you're looking at it from a macro scale. So I have those things on my list, um, but I could probably, maybe I'll get one of those too for the office and, and put that up because we have certain things that we line up uh, with the family for trips. And then obviously with different competitions I want to go compete in. And then with different events we have lined up I have all those kind of, I know what those are now. So I should probably start putting them down on a piece of paper more so than just a little iPhone. A little organization for you would, would be good. I think. I know, <laughs> I know, but dude, yeah, yes, yes. The, 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 the one thing that, that I did, by the way, go ahead. Yeah. I got to tell you where I'm going. Okay. But the one thing that I wanted to mention is a big part of, and I know this is the same for you because you tell me about it all the time, but it's, it's a very, very big deal for me. A big reason that I'm so excited about what we're doing is because I hear from all the people that reply to the newsletter, that hit me up on Instagram about the podcast, that, you know, friends that uh, used to go to my gym back in Long Island that shoot me a text that I haven't heard to in a while that are like, dude, I've been listening to the podcast. It fires me up. Like getting that kind of stuff is awesome. And then like, how can you not be excited about what you're doing when you're literally hearing from people every single day that are enjoying what we're putting out, that are getting some value from what we're putting out and that are like inspired to take a few steps in the right direction because of what we're doing. Like that is the ultimate, like, dude, sign me up. Like, let's record more podcasts. Let's put out more content. Yeah. Let's, you know, like have more in-person events. Like, let's go. Yeah. The newsletter has been really powerful. If you're not subscribed to the Never Zero newsletter, uh, make sure to do so. Um, I respond to every one of those emails. Um, and uh, yeah, and I read them. I respond. And I really appreciate them. I got one guy who wrote back to me. He's currently a pilot in the military and he he wants to become an astronaut. And uh, he j I believe he just had a new baby. Like, dude, I was like, fuck it. I was like, yeah, you want to be an astronaut? Like, that seems like a, a very legit goal. Like, let's go. We're like, talk about uh, 2024 goals. That's badass. I, yeah. 2024 goal. I want to be an astronaut. I'm like, okay, that sounds good. You, if so, yeah. uh, but dude, I, I, I was talking to the guys from diesel brothers. Do you know those guys? So I know of them because of Jaime, because yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I, I, I don't know who they are. I just know that they're, they're a big deal. They're Tell me more. Oh, that's all I know. All I know is that I, I mean, I, they have a them. show on Discovery Channel, and they do okay. all kinds of gnarly stuff with like helicopters and and monster trucks and like you name it. And uh, so I think I'm going to go out and see them in Utah. Uh, maybe record a podcast and then also just do some cool stuff. And I I cannot wait to talk to you about what that like. I just can't wait to hone in a plan for that because that's the part of the job, man. Like if I could just share those experiences with people and they can get inspired to maybe go try something new. And I could, I get to go do that as a byproduct. Like I'm all for it, man. But these guys seem like they're, they're super cool dudes and I'm, I'm excited to go out there. So I'll have to keep you posted of when that's happening, but that's on the list. Getting to Utah. That's cool, man. Diesel brothers. I'll, I'm going to have to check them out. I've been meaning to actually, um, cause it's, it, it's cool that Jaime, a uh, good friend of yours, um, you know, common acquaintance since I've worked with him on, on a couple of things is also getting his pilot's license. Uh, we talk on Instagram every now and then. Mm -hmm. I told you a story about Jaime getting his car keyed, right? Like I just, no, <laughs> so, dude, I, 
Listen, <laughs> Jaime, if you listen to this, I'm sorry, but this isn't even like a bad thing for you, Jaime. But for everybody else who's listening, you're gonna get it's it's you're gonna kick it. So a buddy of mine, he was working real estate and he had closed a few deals. And so he had just bought a brand new Cadillac CTS and he had put new rims and new tires on it. And this thing was like, I mean, this thing was like badass, right? And so he's at his office and he's he's selling real estate, doing whatever he's gotta do. And it just so happens that at his office, another guy had a very similar car, just without the same rims, but a very similar silver CTS. So one day Jaime's at work and his like car alarm's going off. And so he walks outside and he sees this woman just like, dude, just ruining his car, keying it, slamming it with like a hammer, like just completely like just annihilating this car. And he's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? She's like, she's like, I ain't never going to let, you know, I'm not going to let him cheat on me and get away with it, blah, blah. And she thought oh, it was his boyfriend's car. Boy. And so, dude, so this guy got his car <laughs> keyed, the <laughs> windows bashed in, all this stuff, all because. So then he's like, no, 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 that's my car. That's my car. And the woman just looks there, kind of messes it up a little bit more, looks around, looks around. And then she's like, and then she just leaves. And that was it. And I just, just such bad luck in that particular case, like having the same car with, you know, uh, anyway, that just thought I'd share that with you. Oh, dude, how could you be that unlucky? Man, shout out Jaime though. I hope, dude. I hope. Wishing nothing for the best for him, man. And I'm excited he's going to be a pilot. That's awesome. Dude, I'm super excited he's going to be a pilot. And um, I'm glad that those days are 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 behind us because uh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's so bad for him. Well, for anybody who's, um you know, starting 2024 off, if you're, if you kind of feel like right now you're in a little bit of a funk, maybe you're not doing the type of training you want, you're already, what, a week or so in, week or two in, and at this point, like, don't feel discouraged, right? Like right now, if you said to yourself, okay, I had a plan to start something in 2024, like January 1st, let's just say. I just was talking to someone who used to work for um, uh, fit, uh, one of the largest online apps. And they said that most of their actual workouts, um, Beachbody, what, most of their workouts were not starting to get done until the middle of January. So if you're listening to this and in February, actually, if you're listening to this, you're like, dude, I'm already behind the eight ball. I'm already a weekend. I haven't done anything. I'm just going to give in for the next X amount of months. Don't feel that way. Don't do that. Right. Just get back on the path right now. Like there's something you could do right now. Go for a walk, go do some pushups, go do something because just because you miss out on a week of the new year doesn't mean your whole new year is like messed up is, is the advice I'd give you. Um, yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's pretty much where I'm at with it. I, I I love the new year, man, because it is, it is a clean slate. Like it, I know that it's just a date and like, basically what you're saying is that it's just a date. And I think that that's super important for people that maybe missed a week to acknowledge because you starting on January 8th and you starting on January 1st is not a big deal. And they're both better than starting January 15th or whenever, right? Like they're both significantly better. But I do think like, I, I, I would really encourage people to embrace the fact that it's a new year and it's a clean slate. Like Jocko said, man, if you had a good 2023 or a bad 2023, like clean the slate, man, like build, if it was a good year, turn things around. If it was a bad year, like leave that shit behind and think it's going to be a good year, man. Um, it's going to be an interesting year. It's an election year here. It is US, an election so. year. And that's a whole another slew of shit's going to get weird. Yeah, shit's going to get weird, dude. And then, and then you go watch that movie we were just talking about and then you're really going to like, I don't know what you're going to go do. You're going to go oh, dude. create a bunker. They're making bunkers. We don't need to get into this now, but no, they're dude. making bunkers. Have you heard these headlines, dude? What, the prefab bunkers? What, what are you is that about? is that true? Wait, what, like, I don't know. Like that what about? Zuck is building a bunker and all these like really rich people are building bunkers. Am oh, I just I reading know. the wrong headlines? I don't know, dude. You might be on that uh, conspiracy dude. theory headlines, but I, I don't know. Oh, man. If Zuck's know, building man. a bunker, it's probably out by where I live. So I need to get I need to get the keys to that you, thing. Dude, you need to get on a one to one basis with Zuck. Well, but, he's uh, no, a lot of jujitsu, so I got to get him. I got to get him. Um, dude, that's your connection right there. Can't be into that bunker, dude. On a no, on but, all, no but all, honestly though, all all, all jokes aside, because I don't want to end it on on that silly note. Um, it's gonna be a good year, man. It a hundred percent is, and the only person that has that within their control to make this a good year is, is you. That's it. On Monday, this Kafa Klippa, I talked about 
having a strong why for what you want to commit to in 2024. I think that's really important. So if you didn't listen to that, make sure to go back, check that out. Obviously, we have the Q&As we do every single week. Make sure to send us any questions you have. Uh, links for this all in the podcast show notes. And the last thing I will say is that um, if you are looking to make a charitable contribution in 2023, this is, we've talked about this on the podcast. This is not, this is zero to do with business. This is highly personal for me. Uh, March 2nd is Ava's Kitchen. You can check the podcast show notes for avaskitchen.org if you'd like to book your seats at the Ava's Kitchen. It's like a hundred person event and we fundraise for pediatric cancer. So make sure to check that out because seats will be going now. And um, if you're looking to make a charitable contribution for 2023, I recommend that it should go to pediatric cancer. So make sure to check out the podcast show notes for that yeah. and start to do it. Right. Can you still make it for 2023 if this comes out in 2024? Oh, Just I'm sorry. Charitable contribution for 2024. I'm, I apologize. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry. What I meant to say is like, if you are like thinking about, okay, what do I want to get behind in 2024? Got it. Okay. Let's add this to the list, right? Let's add it to the list now uh, for your charitable contributions in 2024. We hope to see you at Ava's Kitchen. Savon actually, you know, Savon, like I was on his podcast. Sure. Yeah, of course. He said he's coming. We'll see. We'll see. When is it? Uh, March 2nd. March 2nd. San Jose, California, the best food you'll ever eat. And every dollar goes a kid fighting cancer. That would go on your big ass calendar. That would go on my big ass calendar. Exactly, Gabe. That's exactly what we need. So, well, bro, I appreciate you. Um, I hope your 2024 is already off to a great start. Even though we're filming this in 2023, by the time it releases, we're like in a time time warp. We're going to be in 2024. So I hope you have a great New Year's. I hope everybody else listening has had a great New Year. And um, yeah, send in your questions. Check out Eva's Kitchen. And most importantly, keep trending hard. That's all I got, brother. You got anything for him? No, man, let's do it. 